Hey everyone, Chris Hall here, formerly of Basher Films and now with Prehistoric Digital in Santa Monica, California, coming to you with another long overdue episode of Anatomy of a Grade. Today I want to take a look at a shot that I did for a project with company Metis Creative. And Metis does a lot of extreme sports, biking, BMX uh, type commercial work. And I want to talk about a technique that I refer to as the cyan swing. A lot of people will refer to it as the blue teal look, the cyan orange look. I don't use this technique a lot, but when I do, um, I do it because the footage presents an opportunity to use the technique. Um, not necessarily because um, I feel like slapping it on to make something look particularly cool or particularly trendy, but I use it when a particular shot or piece lends itself uh, to that kind of complementary color scheme. I'm not a big fan of look presets and just slapping looks randomly on stuff for no reason at all. I like to use a look when I feel like there's a good opportunity to enhance the primary color scheme that's already there um, and really kind of focus the attention a little bit more with the look. If we're looking at this particular shot here, uh, the reason I felt like the cyan swing would work so well is that we have a base palette of colors there that I think works well for the look and that's the warmth of the biker skin tone kind of complemented by the cooler blue on his uniform and the cooler greens in the background uh, that make up the image. So I think we've got a real opportunity here for this cyan swing technique that I'm calling and uh, I kind of want to show you how I got there. I'm not going to grade live today, I'm actually going to show you um, how I built the look and how we got there in the color suite. So here we go. So the first thing I did uh, is start out with a simple primary grade and I'm just gonna show you how I got there. Um, I'm gonna jump right in here to node one and here's the basic primary grade. All I did was crunch the shadows a little bit, raise my highlights um, and add a little bit of coolness to the shadows. Not a lot, just a little bit of blue to get us started. You can already see I've kind of got a warm, cool look going on already. You see the warmth in the skin tone, you see the coolness back here uh, in the trees, and we're already about 50% of the way there. So the next thing that I need to take care of is this highlight on the road right here in the front of frame. So to do that, I'm gonna actually uh, build a power window um, over that pavement. You can see I've kind of highlighted it here. Let me see if I can show you that. There's the window. I've tracked it with the move so that it actually follows the pavement down. And then inside that window, I've really just crunched the contrast just a little bit. You can see down here, I'm just pulling down the mid-tones a little bit. And you can see when I turn this on and off, now we don't have a big white blob down here, but we have a kind of a nice gradient from dark uh, to light. And it really helps focus the eye towards the middle of the screen onto our biker. So when we track that with the footage, I'm just yeah, you can see it right there. Follows the biker up and slowly softens out there at the end with the move. Looking pretty good. So the next thing I'm gonna do is actually adjust the skin tone on this biker. So I've just set up a simple skin key here. You can see I'm just keying uh, those areas of the skin. I'm keying a little bit of the leaves on the ground and I'm swinging the skin more towards an orange uh, tone away from this magenta pink look and it looks a lot more pleasing to my eye and I think it complements uh, the cyan color a little bit better as well. The fourth thing I'm going to do in this uh, look is actually the cyan swing and the cyan swing this is just my interpretation of it a lot of people will do this a lot of different ways um, but basically I've just done a luma key of the shadows here just selected my lower shadows and basically pumped a ton of cyan in there using my mid gamma controls. Now I've got this keyed back a little bit. If I were to uh, bring this to full opacity so you could see the full effect of what I'm doing, you can see a ton of cyan just coming in here in the shadows. Notice the very deep shadows, the blacks, we're keeping those nice and clean and true black. But these areas over here, we've got a big cyan tint to them. Now, I like to roll that effect back a little. I don't like to be over the top with this effect. So I'm just going to reduce the effect of this node just a little bit by about 40%. And there you can see the move that I'm doing. 
just subtle, but it gets us most of the way there. So the fifth step in this process is to build a power window around the biker. And I've got it built here. Let me just show you what that's doing. I'll show you the window. There it is. Um, it's really just bumping um, the highlights and the mids just a little bit to bring him out of the background. Um, I've also tracked it throughout the frame. You can see it tracks with him. And furthermore, I've also keyframed that track so that the effect is lessened here at the beginning um, because this power window is so small uh, and therefore the softening effect of it is less at the beginning. I've kind of um, keyframed the effect to come on harder as he rounds the top of the hill here. You can see it's much stronger here at the end than it is at the beginning. But this just pulls him out of the background a little bit more and kind of focuses the viewer's eye on him. So now because of that bump in brightness on the biker, I want to bring down the outside of the frame. And I'm actually going to do that with another power window here that's just a vignette on the edges of the frame. You can see I'm just crunching the mids on the edge of frame to really focus the eye towards the center of the frame. So I'm just going to show you the whole shot playing back in real time now. And you can see that nice cool cyan shadow complemented by a nice warm skin tone really gives this piece a little bit more of an edge. And we're not forcing a huge look on it. Here it is without the look. You can already see the beginnings of that look there in the footage. We've basically just enhanced it a little bit more and given it more of an edge and kind of brought a little more cyan into the shadows. Um, and cooled it down a little bit overall so that the warmth of that skin tone and on the leaves really pops through. So I really like this look. Um, I think you have to be judicious about when you apply it or if you're a director or cinematographer when you ask for it in the color suite. Um, it can be overused but in this particular case it worked really well and I'm really pleased um, with the look of this project. So that's it for this episode of Anatomy of a Grade. Uh, just a few updates here. Uh, the blog has moved um, from basherfilms.blogspot.com to now chrishallcolor.blogspot.com. Uh, go on over, check it out. Uh, I've got some great updates on the blog and you can also uh, find links uh, to my new work home which is prehistoric digital in Santa Monica California I invite you to head over to their webpage and uh, check out the great facilities and great things that are going on there really proud to be a part of that team so this is Chris Hall signing off until next time